words are labels or handles on experience. <clears throat> a word has, has meaning, but it has meaning that we've learned or we attribute to it. And it's an interesting thing if you think about it, because when we're babies, words are just sounds. And in time, we learn the meanings. Uh, or even as an adult, you know, maybe you're learning a foreign language. I love learning other languages and I, I love hearing a new word and getting used to it. And, and eventually uh, my, my system will remember it and I hear the word and, and the meaning immediately flashes in my experience in some way. It either comes up as a picture or it may come up as a translation or a sensation in my body. Um, so it's it's really interesting to observe a, a word acquiring meaning in your experience. I remember a lot as a kid um, starting to hear a word. I mean, it, it still happens as an adult, uh, but hearing a word and not really knowing what it meant or not knowing what it meant at all. And then you start hearing it. It's like, oh, that word, that word's starting to be used a lot. Or I, I would hear it and then maybe because of the context that I heard it used, I started getting clues as to what it might mean. And eventually I can, I figure it out or I go look it up. And then that word now has meaning. It, it has, yeah, it, it means something in my life and it brings up some experience. And then at times um, uh, words may, have a, a strong emotional impact on us. You know, like if, if there's certain, you know, kind words that were said to you, those words, when you hear them, they bring up kind of wonderful memories, wonderful feelings. And then other words can be very hurtful, right? When people have uh, different um, curse words that they use or, or uh, racial slurs, they can really hurt and bring up negativity. And these are all forms of uh, what we call anchoring in, in NLP, which is you know just some stimulus being associated with a feeling and an experience. But I love observing the whole process, going from something not having any meaning, just being a sound, like when you listen to another language that you've never heard, you may think you know what it means just because the sounds may be similar to something in your language, but really it means nothing. It's like listening to a, a computer beep. You don't necessarily know what the beeps mean. Um, and then over time, you they get meaning and then they may get strong emotional impact. And then it's fun to run the process in reverse, especially with any words that um, bring up negative associations. Uh, there, there are a couple exercises you can do to sort of flatten or get them back to neutral. If somebody has a, an insult or a word they can use that really affects me, I want to be able to flatten that so that I can hear it and just be like, eh. um, so you can do this thing of, of disappearing a word where you say it again and again and again, and eventually it takes. It, it sort of flattens out the emotional experience of it just by re repeating it again and again. And a lot of, you know, I remember when I was a kid thinking about the word tongue. And at a certain point, I, I was really confused about whether that was really the word for it. I had to go look it up. I was like, oh, that couldn't be the word for it. Because I had, I had said it so many times that it was just a weird sound at that point. And if it brought up any experience, it was confusion at that point. So repeat, repeating a word over and over again will help flatten uh, the emotion that's gotten hooked up in your nervous system. You could also do things um, that I've talked about before. You can change the tone of voice uh, with which you're hearing it. You can imagine um, somebody that you like saying it or uh, a cartoon character saying it. And just that, that change in tone of voice, we're not changing the word, we're not changing the meaning of the word, but it changes the way it hits our nervous system and it can flatten out that reaction to it. Uh, 
You can also take the word and, and say it really, 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 really slowly. And that that will uh, that can flatten it out or speed it up so quickly that you know you can't quite make it out. Um, I don't want to use bad words, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you an example. Um, so that's a fun way of of uh, kind of shifting our meaning of a word. Now, sometimes a word, um, it, it might not be an insult, like a, a racial slur or something like that, um, but it might be a word that has a particular charge for us. Um, you know, it might, it might be a word that brings up fear for you in some way. And uh, let's take that word, fear. Um, and what you do with this exercise is instead of, uh, we're not trying to repeat it enough to cancel out the meeting, but we're exploring the, the many, many different types of meanings that it could have. Uh, so fear, you can experience fear in one way, um, but you can begin to play with the, you know, the many contexts that it could show up in. So, you know, fear could be like excitement of getting on a, a roller coaster or uh, the fear of fear or the fear of too much joy. Um, being in fear, with fear, around fear, above fear, before fear fear less. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm riffing on all the different ways that you can play with the word fear. And it, it has a similar uh, effect of, of freeing it from a rigid association that you're, that you're having with it. Because I think that's where we get stuck is when, when one word becomes too strong of an automatic trigger or response in our experience. And so this is, you know, this is a fun exercise you can do with it. I, I used to um, really not like the idea of pressure, being under pressure. And, you know, people will talk about, okay, well, pressure makes a diamond. That's kind of obvious. That one tends to um, bounce off people because they've heard it so many times. But, um, but if you do think about pressure, uh, again, you can think about it and riff on it many, many different ways. Um, is it pressure from above? Is it pressure from the size? What if you're pressuring something? What if it's to pressurize? Um, under pressure. It's funny that we say we're under pressure rather than over pressure. In pressure entering pressure, expanding pressure and diminishing pressure. So again, just playing with different ways I can use it until the meaning that I had sort of rigidly in my nervous system begins to, um, begins to loosen. So um, to review, I talked about how a word can, can um, acquire meaning over time from when we're a child or even as an adult. And then how it can sort of split into, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with uh, words that send me to a wonderful, joyous state. Um, but it's the ones that become like, if a certain insult really gets under my skin, then I'm gonna wanna take some time and either flatten the word by repeating it a lot or playing with the tone of voice and those things, or kind of this exercise of, oh, there's a thousand different ways of experiencing pressure or a thousand different ways of experiencing fear. And in, it has the same effect of kind of loosening or widening your range of experience so that it isn't automatically associated with just a single experience. So I hope you enjoy that.